Hi, my name is uh, George Dagnino. I would like to show you some important lessons uh, coming from uh, from this table. Uh, this this table shows uh, four three model portfolios uh, and the return and the S and P 500 buy and hold. Uh, the returns are from January 2008 to January 2020. This shows the balance by investing $10,000 in January 2008. This is the return, total return. This is the compound annual growth rate, which means the average growth rate during the period. The maximum loss during the period, the volatility, the standard deviation or volatility of the portfolio, and what is the worst year. This is the return from January 2009. Uh, this is a very defensive portfolio with, of ETFs. This is a more aggressive portfolio, more volatile uh, as a result of uh, ETFs. This is a, what I, would, what I wanted to do is to show by adding bonds, TLT, and utilities to an average portfolio, to a portfolio that performs like the S&P 500, what would happen? And this is, of course, is the, the S&P buy and hold. Uh, the return from since, since 2008 was 171% which is 8.3% at compound annual growth rate. Uh, the S&P 500 suffered on a buy and hold, 48% uh, loss, uh, maximum loss. The standard deviation was 15.8%, which is the volatility of the index. And the worst year was a 36.8% loss. Now the, ET, the portfolio number one timing, by the way, these three portfolios the, the basic, the simple model was uh, hold the ETF uh, as long as they are above the 200-day moving average, sell them uh, if they are below the 200-day moving average at month end. So this is a conservative portfolio. Notice how the return is 6.8%, loss is only 7.4%, very low volatility compared to the one of the S&P 500, and the worst year loss is much, much less than that of the S&P 500. So a conservative portfolio clearly does not perform well relative to a buy and hold, but has all sorts of advantages in terms of volatility of the portfolio and losses. This is a more aggressive portfolio uh, of ETFs, and in fact, the, the more aggressive uh, nature of the portfolio it results in a higher return uh, and also a higher loss and also a higher volatility here and also a higher loss in the worst year. So the bottom line within the lesson between these two is if you want to have low losses and have low volatility, you choose a conservative portfolio, but beware, the returns are going to go lower. If instead you want a more aggressive portfolio, then you have to stomach, so to speak, the um, uh, higher losses here, uh, higher losses for the worst year, and then, of course, higher volatility. Now, this is a, an interesting thing that I thought. I said, well, let's say we add uh, bonds and utilities to an average portfolio that performs like the S&P 500. What does happen following the same rules as I followed for the previous two portfolios? Notice how by increasing TLT and XLU, the performance sort of decreased, it's sort of in between these two, uh, but and it's the same as buy and hold of the S&P 500. However, notice how the loss is only 7.7% compared to 48%. The volatility is 6.4% instead of 15.8, and the loss of the worst year is only 5.4% instead of 36.8. And since January 2019, the return of this portfolio has been 11.1%. So in a way, this gives you three basic strategies. You want to be a conservative strategy with ETFs, a more aggressive strategies, or if you invest in stocks and you have an average portfolio, then if you emphasize, you give a higher location of TLT and XLU over the long term, you'll probably achieve a better performance. Well, thank you very much for uh, listening, and I hope to see you really, really soon. So long. I would like to remind you that uh, we publish the Peter Deck Portfolio every Sunday, 
and is available on, the, on www.pdadag.com. And really, in every issue, we cover all this kind of subjects that we have dealt with with this presentation. I wrote a book, Providing in Bull Bear Market, was commissioned by Megro Hill. Uh, education is available in Asia, in Asia in several editions. It goes in detail, no formulas, no charts, no many things, but try to explain what, are the, what is the relationship between uh, business cycles and various markets, how business cycles drive and are driven by commodities, business decisions, financial markets, the Fed, and everything. And it's, it's a pretty comprehensive study of, of explanation, more than study, of how business cycles work. This is a, as an analysis of a study that I made on uh, how certain portfolio using ETS behave, uh, what is their volatility, what is their uh, loss, maximum losses, minimum losses, what are the, the features that portfolio should have to have good returns and low risk. This is a, another book, which is the follow-up of this, and and it completes, finishes with, uh, ends with uh, in chapter nine, uh, which shows and discusses in detail a way of investing in selecting stocks that I'm very, quite frankly, I'm very proud of it. Hopefully you will see why. <laughs>